This is definitely the most hardcore movie of 2024. All the viewers were in awe of the movie. It's a national production of Kazakhstan. The actors are the strongest active special forces in the country. They did all the technical maneuvers themselves. The weapons are the most powerful equipment in service. At the beginning of the story, Colonel Sultan is leading the special forces to cross the snowy mountains by helicopter. The target is a terrorist hiding in the mountains. As they sneak up on the base, a sniper quickly takes out the guard at the entrance. The special forces quickly infiltrate the base. Just around the corner, the team is confronted by three terrorists. The Sultan didn't attack directly, but signaled the terrorists to put down their weapons. They didn't want to cooperate. The team had to shoot them dead. The sound of gunfire alerted the other terrorists. A big battle started. The team members used the bunkers around them to coordinate with each other and shoot accurately, causing the terrorists to collapse. One of them retaliated and fired a howitzer at the team. While he was trying to reload, the team quickly shot him dead. The rest of the terrorists fled to the second floor. One of them was going to blow up his explosives and die with them. Luckily, the Sultan arrived in time and killed him, successfully solving the crisis. After the mission, the Sultan approached the general to report the situation. The general looked worried. It turns out that not long ago, the general received reliable information. Terrorists are secretly planning to attack military bases and civilian facilities in Kazakhstan. In order to do that, they have to find out where the terrorist recruitment centers are and eliminate the source. Otherwise, when the terrorists regroup, they'll come back. According to reliable sources, the recruitment center is hidden in the area where the Sultan used to be in charge. The general wants the Sultan to take on the task of finding the exact location of the recruitment center. In order to ensure that the mission goes smoothly, the general sends Damam as the special operations commander to accompany the Sultan. The Sultan came to the Middle East and found the owner of the tavern. They were friends. The owner had some contacts in the area. He took the picture from the Sultan and said slowly that not long ago, there were some new faces here. They were recruiting. He could help with the information. The only condition was that he wanted the Sultan to pick him up. Sultan agreed to take his family home. Then the boss approached the bald man, who was the leader of the recruitment center. Sake, the boss lied that he also wanted to sign up. Ventral Snake doesn't suspect anything and takes him under his wing. Upon his return, the boss told Sultan that although the details were uncertain, Viper was indeed planning terrorist attacks. Two of them, just recently, the boss only found out about one port. That's when one of Viper's men burst in. He noticed that the buttons on the boss's shirt were missing, and guessed that he'd planted a bug on it. The boss reacted instantly when one of his men was about to strike. One of the other men used a spray gun and hit them so hard that they dared not show up behind the bunker. The henchman seized the opportunity and pressed the boss underneath him. In the nick of time, the Sultan threw out a dagger to bind the bald head, but the boss was accidentally killed by a shot from the henchman. Just as the henchmen were approaching his work, Sultan hides behind the wall and shoots off his pistol. The two of them start to fight in close combat. Sultan grabbed the trophy. He didn't realize that his men were no less capable in melee combat. The two of them are in a stalemate. Sultan tries to pick up the gun on the ground. His men try to stop him and kick him back to the kitchen. The Sultan throws out a handful of flour, then grabs a kettle, but his men don't let up. The Sultan finally found a chance to grab it. The Sultan finds an opportunity to lock his neck in a death grip, and he falls to the ground. The Sultan added a brutal bull rush and brought him to another room. After a few more rounds of output, only then did he finally break his henchman's neck. However, what the Sultan did not expect was that he had just stepped out of the room and was held at gunpoint. The next second two bullets flew one after another, directly killing the two terrorists. Sultan then followed Damon back to the base. Only then did he learn that the terrorists had begun their operation. This is Kazakhstan's newest fighter jet, the Suminas 30. It's currently on a training mission over the Navy and Air Force bases. It's the dominant fighter jet in Kazakhstan today. Its twin-seat, twin-engine structure makes it more agile. It's capable of flying at a wide angle of elevation or circling in a radius. At the same time, the black and white visualization of the fuselage, the Suminas 30 has excellent air concealment capabilities. Whether it's used for surprise missions or long-ranger combat, it performs extremely well. However, during training, one of the fighters suffered a sudden engine failure. Luckily, the pilot reacted quickly and maneuvered the plane into a rapid descent. Fortunately, the pilot reacted quickly and maneuvered the plane back to the ground. Little did the young pilot realize that a terrorist attack on the base was about to begin. A fake cargo ship is being prepared for a terrorist attack. 
Unbeknownst to them, Kazakhstan had already been informed of their plan. In order to dismantle the terrorist's plot, a drone missile was launched to monitor the terrorist freighter below. According to reliable sources, the freighter is stocked with bombs. A total of 12 terrorists are guarding the ship. In order to get information about the second terrorist attack, HQ sent Sultan and others disguised as inspectors to board the ship and try to capture the terrorists alive. Soon after, Curly learned from Belly Snake that the situation had changed. He immediately activated all the bombs and handed over the switch to one of his men. If anything happens to him, he will release the button immediately. At the same time, the special forces use diving suits to sneak into the hole and take care of the surrounding guard silently. After the Sultan and his men boarded the ship, they quickly attacked the terrorists leading the way. But the intrusion of the special forces was quickly discovered by the terrorists. He immediately returned to the captain's cabin and tried to warn them. But the next moment, he was killed by the Sultan on the spot. Seeing that he could no longer resist, Curly told his man to release the button. He was afraid to die, but he didn't release the button. On the other side, the special forces have arrived at the bottom of the ship. They found the explosives stored by the terrorists. It's not easy to dismantle the double-layered structure with dense wiring. Luckily, Dan and bought him enough time. After the crisis was over, the two of them returned to the base with the only surviving terrorist. The answer they got from him was that the terrorists were working on a bigger plot. Even the attack on the harbor was a cover-up. Their real goal was to take a military plane hostage and then attack the nuclear reactor, causing a radiation fallout. On their way to interrogation, in a warehouse in the Aktau industrial zone, Omar is brainwashing the terrorists into willingly giving their lives for a terrorist attack. After arriving at the airbase near the airport, the terrorists lift the curtain, distribute weapons, disguise themselves as maintenance personnel, and attack the garrison inside. Unprepared for the attack, the soldiers were unable to fight back and were soon slaughtered. The terrorists then drove into the airport and continued their attack on the troops inside. One of the pilots was wounded in the arm and hid behind his car. The terrorists came after him with guns. As he closed his eyes and waited to die, his companion, Becca, arrived just in time to save him. Becca told White to hold on to his rifle while she went to the front to find out what was going on. By now, the terrorists were almost wiped out. Mayo, the pilot's son, gets into a Su-27 and uses it to attack the nuclear reactor. Command learns of the attack on the base and immediately sends the Sultan. At that moment, Becca drove her car right in front of the terrorists. Luckily, Becca reacted quickly. He was able to back up his car and avoid the attack. In front of him, the road was completely blocked. Instead of fighting, Bukha took a detour into the base, intending to fly a su 30 to intercept the su 27 that was being held hostage by the terrorists. The survivors tried to stop them. After all, after the last training session, there's only one missile in the plane. However, as a combat pilot, Bekka can't afford to run away at this critical moment. But then, the terrorists came after the two of them again. Luckily, the special forces came to their aid and cleared them out. The next battle was between the su 30 and the su 27 Several terrorists attacked an airbase in Kazakhstan. They disguised themselves as truck drivers delivering fuel to that airbase. During a routine check by one of the soldiers, a muzzle of a gun suddenly protruded. The terrorists launched a sneak attack on the garrison. The troops, unable to react, suffered heavy losses. The terrorists took a su 27 hostage. They stormed the runway to attack a nearby nuclear reactor. Troops in Humvees fired wildly, but they couldn't stop the su 27 from taking off. Pilot Becca is ordered to intercept the su 27 with only one missile in his su 30 the su 27 was held hostage by the terrorists. Eight minutes before the two planes arrived at the nuclear power plant, the headquarters was informed of the situation and ordered the evacuation of the plant's employees. The su 27 took off before the terrorists, but it was fully fueled and armed and was quickly overtaken by the lightly armed su 30 Becca was about to launch a missile, but the plane's missile system was disabled. Becca was unable to attack, so he could only use the machine guns on board to attack the Suminus 27. But he couldn't shoot him down with that kind of attack. And Mayo's piloting skills are not bad either. A variety of extreme maneuvers resulted in fewer bullets being fired. The two planes are locked in a life and death struggle at high altitude. Suddenly, the Su-27s made a cobra hole and locked onto the Su-30s. In order to help the su 30 get out of the trap, they immediately arranged to launch ground anti-aircraft missiles to help intercept the Su-27's attack. 
but the missiles fired by the Suminus-27 were already behind the Suminus-30. Baka, in a hurry, fired a signal jamming bomb, but only one of the missiles was destroyed. The last missile is still coming towards the Suminus-30. In order not to be hit by the missiles, Baka can only fly the plane to the ground to compensate. At this point, the Suminus-30 is almost on the ground, but the missiles are still in pursuit. Baka noticed the mountain in front of him and had an idea. He flew towards the mountain, and when he was about to hit it, he activated the vectoring thrust engine and completed a wave of airborne maneuvers. The missiles behind him are blocked by the mountain. At the same time, the anti-aircraft missiles launched from the ground had already caught up with the Suminus 27. But what I didn't expect was that mail turned on the authentication system. The missile recognizes the Suminus 27 and immediately veers away from it. Missing it, Mayo continues to approach the nuclear power plant at high speed and sees a city below him. The Suminus 30, in an attempt to prevent the Suminus 27 from attacking the city, moves in below the Suminus 27 in an attempt to force him out. In the end, Mayo managed to get pissed off by the Baka and chase the Suminus 30 into the sandstorm. The two planes quickly gained altitude and pass each other at 10,000 meters. They're both waiting for the right opportunity. As they reach the top, the Suminus 27 loses engine power. The Suminus 27 loses power and falls to the ground. Baka immediately takes the Suminus 30 down and fires missiles at the Suminus 27. Finally, amidst a sea of fire, Baka completed her mission in the Suminus 30 and returned safely to the base. At last, the crisis was solved by all the people. In the 21st century, there are still terrorist attacks that victimize ordinary people and lead them astray. People of any country or region should not support or join terrorist organizations so that the world can be peaceful and people can be safe. The fight against terrorist organizations will not stop.